afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Artists of Color. I am Elaine Hall Corbin, your host, and I am glad you guys are with us today. I have a special guest, and I say special because all my guests are special, but she's special because she's also a colleague producer alongside me and alongside a bunch of other producers here at BNN Media. So I'd like to introduce Britt Johnson. Hi. From Boss Lady News. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. It's been a crazy day. I know. And for I'm both good. of us. How are you? I'm good. I'm enjoying the weather. Well, I'm are you enjoying you the weather? No. No? I no. love the heat. I, was, I don't. We were ready for this. You were. I, I wasn't. Was. No. <laughs> no. Uh -uh. I think I actually accidentally left my AC on. I don't do summer. So it's going to be cold when you get home. That's right. I'm good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, this is the first time you've been on my show. It is. And I like that. It is. I was on your show a couple of years ago. Remember? Yes. Yes. Before the studio shut down. Mm hmm. And I had a good time doing that. Thank you. And so I thought I would return the favor. And I appreciate that. You know? I'm excited to be here. Oh, thank you. I am too. <sighs> the first thing I want to ask you is this. Mm -hmm. Why the name Boss Lady News? Oh, well, wow. Um, you know, I don't honestly know how the name came about. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Um, so, for the most part, I started off doing like reality TV soon as like the YouTube um, big boom kind of hit, and it was called Brit's Black Reality. I've never seen that. Yeah, you don't want to see it. I think uh, I deleted I them, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Because I was um, going home to look them up. <laughs> you don't want to see it. It was, it was a mess. But, you know, everyone who was interested in media at the time or interested in like looking into some other form of entertainment and participating in that. Um, I jumped in and did that too. And then one day I was walking by and I had been living in Eggleston Square, but I had Ooh. never walked past this particular building maybe. And everything in me was like, go in and find out how what that was. How long ago was that? Oh, wow. Because these guys have been here since 2007. So I was talking with Monique from okay. downstairs, Monique Douglas, and she had let me know I'd hit my 10 year probably a year ago. Oh, really? Yeah, so I'm about 11 years in on Boss Lady News now. And I'll be 17 years in on Artists of Color in September. Oh, wow. See, it, it, it's been such a journey, no. you know, being able to, well, the name. I don't know where the name came from. Yeah. I just think I needed to come up with a name. And I'm a pretty bossy person. Yes. And I might as well run with it. And I decided to name it Boss Lady so News. So that's how you got Boss Lady News. That's right. Boss Lady. lady. That's okay. Right. It works. <laughs> it works for you. It works for me. Oh, um, my. But it's been such a journey getting an opportunity to be around all of the different producers right. and really seeing our productions like organically grow yes and just participate in, in even outside events Th then that was going to be my next question you always do a lot of boss lady news out at different events how do you do that um, i want to know <laughs> well i do have some really cool people um, that i reach out to Okay. or that send me events and they're like, hey, this is coming up, if you wanna come through. I'm like, as long as you guys are fine with me recording, bringing cameras, taking pictures. But I think right now everybody's okay with that. Yes. And so I have this one friend, um, Ray of Sunshine, Racine, that I always reach out to and I'm like, hey, where are the new places to go? Where are you going this weekend? What's popping? So, you know, it's just a matter of just asking people what are they up to? Okay. What do they enjoy? Because what I enjoy and what other people enjoy could are be two different things. Two different things, right? Absolutely. And oftentimes, what I'll look into going to um, might not be what other people are into. So I reach out to people and just ask them what are they up to, or they reach out to me because they haven't seen me in a while, and they're oh, like, yeah. "Hey, come on out." <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's wondering. Because I'm always seeing you on either Facebook, more on Facebook, though, 
than Instagram. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask that, I'm going to say this. Which one do you like better as far as social media and getting out there? Do you find Facebook more or do you find Instagram more? I actually do more Instagramming you do. than I do Facebook. And the reason I do that is because um, there's more editing options with Instagram. There, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I like recording in Instagram more. Okay. I like taking photos in Instagram more. And you can actually put together what's called reels. And these reels are easier to create on Instagram and they're more creative than they are on Facebook. So oh. right now, although Meta owns both of them, um, I prefer Really? To, yeah, Meta owns both. I did not know that. Yeah, I prefer I thought it was to, just Facebook. No, no, Mark Zuckerberg has definitely done his thing in terms of So that's media what I heard on the news this morning. Yes. Okay. So in the news right now There's a fight going on. There's a fight between Elon Musk, Musk and, and who Zuckerberg. owns Twitter. <laughs> yep. And Mark Zuckerberg, he wants to sue Mark Zuckerberg, who just opened up a new platform. Called Instant or In or something like that. I forgot the name and, of and it. And it's part of Instagram. So it's part of Instagram. Yes. Right. And mm -hmm. it's... Ooh. That was a cheer. <laughs> Not us. Not us? Mm -mm. Oh. Um, it was a uh, fight because Twitter... Elon Musk yeah. fired most of his employees. Uh, yeah, I heard that. And when he did that, they needed a job, and Meta hired them. Then, okay. So as he hired them, they what? brought the, the intellectual the, property with them as well. Ah, uh, but it was theirs. But it was theirs. But it was theirs. The people, you know, the people that he fired and got hired by another, you know, another company that was theirs. So it was 100%. why, you know? So it's the question of who owns somebody else's intellectual property. Oh, so that's what the fight's about. Yeah, and it's, it's weird because um, for any of you iPhone users, it's the same concept, especially developers, people that develop apps for iPhones. Okay. Oh, okay. If your app becomes very popular, um, iPhone or, or Apple will actually reach out to you and see if they can purchase the app from you. And they oh, have really? to do that before they oh, can they incorporate do. it into their system because it's your intellectual property. And you could go back and sue them if you were to find that they had something that's basically yours, okay. but it's embedded in their actual system. Oh. Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. See, that's a little bit of information technically that I didn't know. Right. But I know I had been hearing for the past two or three days about Zucker and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and Elam, they're having this issue. This little feud. They, it's definitely a feud, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And it's interesting because what they're really fighting over is the, the popular platform. Oh. You know, who's using what? But who's, and who's sharing using the it information? More. Who's using it more? how many more followers and who's leaving certain social medias and going to other Others. social medias. Um, because Twitter also decided that they were going to cut. If you're not a Twitter member, yes, right, they're going to cut how many tweets you tweets can see. Tweets you I was listening to that on the news this morning, too. So it's just a, it's a lot of control issues, and, and it all comes down to who controls the media, you know, what information you're getting, how you're getting that information. And a lot of millennials yes. and uh, what are the Gener anybody younger than yes, <laughs> anybody down there? They're getting most of their news and information from social media, media. these days. So it really is, um, you know, something for people to actually pay attention to and be aware of because this is how a lot of children are communicating and how they're getting information. That's true. So you hear that, everybody? We need to be aware, and we also need to make sure our children are aware, mm -hmm. okay? Because all of our children are on social media probably more than we are, because mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot. Both, all of my grandchildren, except for the little teeny ones, most of my grandchildren are on social media. Absolutely. So I, okay, and I mean the little ones, the 13-year-old, the 10-year-old. Even know, younger. Even, you're right, even, even younger. younger. 
you know? And it's important that you know what your children are watching. Yes. So I have a, my, my middle child yes. um, has a habit of listening or watching whatever with headphones on, <laughs> and I just hate it. Oh, see? I hate it because I don't know what, know what she's, she's listening, listening to. to. I don't know what she's watching. That's right. That's and I would rather know. So when I'm you, like, take the headphones I off. <laughs> I want to hear, yeah, what, you're hear what you're hearing. Right. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I want to get back to you. Yes. I mean, that was good because you gave a lot of information, a lot of it that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and that's why, that's why she's called Boss Lady News, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but... You've, you've covered different events. Yes. Let's talk about the last couple of events that you've covered. With you there? Oh, it could be with you there. <laughs> this feisty lady here, okay, got us not just um, <laughs> did we get into the uh, uh, embrace, right? But this feisty <laughs> lady got us down towards the front and we were there as the reveal happened. <laughs> and I don't know how she does it. I really don't because <laughs> she's like a spunky chihuahua that oh, nobody that's... wants to mess with. Like nobody wants to mess with the chihuahua <laughs> that's like biting at your leg. That's Missy Lane. <laughs> oh, do you... I can't tell that story. <laughs> I just thought about that. I've got to tell you the story. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't help it. I mean, well, first of all, for those that don't know, and once you hear it, everybody will know, I'm one of Elma Lewis's nieces. Mm -hmm. So when the Embrace uh, Monument was unveiled, I was, yes, I was there, up front. And I wanted to see what it was like. And I had already gone in and um, put out my information, contracting, saying, you know, that I'm in, in communications and that I also publish a publication and that I also write a, a um, no, and also do a television show. Mm -hmm. So I put all that out there. And I also went in on their website mm -hmm. and signed up and got my little ticket. And I was there and all the, well, see, I started out with just Miss Britt. And before it was over, I had an entourage of Three. Yes. Because my son showed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everybody, we were all there, you know, mm -hmm. and we were all out front. And that was the most amazing thing. Yeah. You know, that was an amazing, amazing thing. The energy was, was amazing. Wasn't it? The energy was amazing. The smiles on people's, oh, people's faces, places. the hugs Ooh, that people were giving, child. people you hadn't seen in a while were yes. there. The energy was amazing. It was. And you know what I liked more about the energy? The energy was coming from us. Right. People that looked like us. Right, right. And that to me, that was the most important, honorable thing that it could ever be. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's mm -hmm. why I do what I do. That's why my television show is called Artists of Color. And that's why my production, my publication and my company is called Humanistic. But it's not humanistic as being human. It's being humanistic because of us. Mm -hmm. Because we are human. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I say that's why I do what I do. Right. Bringing yeah. awareness to those artists that are kind of like the underdogs. They don't get the recognition they don't get, and no, opportunity don't. to be featured. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I was just talking to Ashley a little while ago before you came in. Do you know that there's going to be the unveiling of the, um, what is it, Edward O. Gordine yeah. statue at the at Gordine Park across from the police station that they redid? Okay. I on didn't the first of August. Okay. Well, you know, you have my number. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are we going down there together? <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, and I found you know how I found out. No. Now you ought to know how I found out. The emails no. that we were getting from the mayor's office? No. Who? His name is Hayward Fennell. Oh, Mr. Hayward Mr. Fennell. Mr. Hayward. Mm -hmm. Well, he put it out to everybody. Okay. And I think I was only maybe one of three people that answered him. Okay. But I told him I'll be there with bells on. That's right. You know. And I'll be there before 1 o'clock. And that's what we need, like more people reaching out 
to local media to say that Thank something's you. going on, to Thank let us you. know something's happening. So another feisty moment <laughs> of Missy Lane. That's what you should have, feisty moments <laughs> of Missy Lane. That should be like a little segment <laughs> within the show. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so she wants to get a media pass, right? The city of Boston. Oh, yes. That media pass. little deal. And we go downtown. <laughs> and before we go downtown, I'm like, okay, let me just call because I want to know exactly where we're, we're going, going. How are we going to get there? What floor? What do we need to bring? And I speak to the office. And I'm like, you know, I'm one of the, the members from BNN. I'm also Boston uh, Media. And we're looking to get the media passes. And the lady goes, do you happen to know Miss Elaine Corbin Hall? Can you switch that around? It's all Corbin. Paul Corbin. And I'm like, well, yeah, she's one of the producers also. And she's like, well, she's already contacted us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, people. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> like, well, see, but then if it wasn't for you and us going down there together, I would not have artists of color registered with the city. That's right. Because I would not have known. That's right. You so know? it's it's an official registered business. Yes, it is. Yes. And I'm so proud of you for doing that. Thank you. 100%. I'm proud, I'm proud that you let me do that. <laughs> Feisty. I tell you. <laughs> but wow. while we're down there, we go into the office. Yup. And there's like one of the representatives that comes out. We hold him for about 10, 15 well, minutes sure asking did. him questions to make sure. Mm -hmm. But long story short, for any of the producers or media out there, if you are interested in getting onto the mayor's list, list. you can. You can actually contact City Hall, let them know that you're one of the producers or you are a producer right. and they will add you to the mayor's list and you'll actually know all of the events that the mayor's that ever going, ever to, show going up to show up at. Right. And if I get any more, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Every day now we're Every getting day. these emails. Every day. <laughs> Your fault. <laughs> oh, now she's going to blame it on me. Yes. Okay. Now I know. <laughs> but it was, oh my gosh. You must tell them about, what is it, Art Rocks Art? Art oh, rock. yeah. <laughs> yes. So, um, and actually, I emailed that over to you. Yes, you did. But it's, it's a large file, so I can't get it to you guys to show right now. But it will be on her social media. So <laughs> make sure you guys go and follow her on Artists Facebook, on Instagram. You're on both. I'm on both. Yes. So um, that was awesome. I know, wasn't it? Yes. I loved it because not only did we get a chance to meet artists from the area, yes. we got a chance to meet the director of the um, organization. I've known her for a couple, of, I've known her since she got here mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago, but I'll tell you, she just became the director. Okay. She was, she hadn't been the director. It was never official, mm -hmm. but she was doing it, what, I wanna say pro bono, but not quite. Mm -hmm. She was doing it um, as an assistant, even though they didn't have a full-time director. Right. But finally they made her the director. Right. And she, she's done a number of good things, I, I feel, because I've, um, I've attended a few of her events at, at Hibernian Hall mm -hmm. since she's become the director. Right. And I think she's doing pretty good. And we got to learn the story of Hibernian Hall, which was oh. awesome. All the amazing people yes. that have been through Hibernian Hall I mean, everybody from James Brown. Oh yeah. To I was around uh, Dr. Martin Luther King stopped in there at yep. one point. Moving forward, just all of these amazing artists. Somebody from Parliament, Funkadelic Parliament. Because, yep. You know, there you go. With that, I mean, just amazing people that have been through historical Hibernian Hall. So that was awesome to find out about. And then the amazing drummers oh, that got everybody they up. They were amazing. Shoot, they were fabulous. They were. Weren't they? I said. And, and you know, they had been there, same group, had been there back in April mm -hmm. because I was there when they had an evening in Ghana. Oh. And they were, they were the same drummers. Wow. Wow. And African dancers, they were. I was more concerned. I was more 
uh, interested mm -hmm. in listening to them and listening to them talk every now and then. Then, and that was at the evening in Ghana. Yeah. Um, I got some information, you know, I audio taped some stuff, but the gentleman that was talking about being in Ghana, he wasn't that interesting. Entertaining. Okay. No. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. And then I found out from a friend of mine about what he does. Okay. So no, he was not that interesting. Mm. But I got the information that I got was enough for me to put, you know, to put thoughts together. Right. And I was surprised to see them again at Art Roxbury. Right. I thought that was great. That was Weren't awesome. They beautiful? It was the awesome. Everybody was up. Everybody was enjoying them. How about that young man that opened up the sh opened up the poetry the po piece? Oh yeah. Oh my god, he was absolutely Fabulous. Yes, the poetry piece. I loved piece. his poetry. It was a piece for his mom and his grandmother. Grandma. Yes. Yeah, that was awesome. And the other one too, the one that opened up, that young tall man. I didn't see you him. You didn't see him? I came a little late. Oh little my late. gosh. But I, I heard the, the Cuban singer. I got there by the time the Cuban singer, when she was singing. Yeah. She was good. I had never heard Afro-Cuban music. Either. And her voice was, was amazing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I just, you know, absolutely. just the experience of the night was very, um, very melanated and diverse. Versed. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And it really was. It really was. I was glad to see. Because they almost had a full house there. Yes. You know? The only thing that was annoying me, although oh, they looked amazing, course. were the, the centerpieces. Oh, you could not. Because the centerpieces on the table were so tall. I know, so it was blocking. Yes. I know. That was, oh my at, goodness. Hey, at, two, at points in time, I want to get up and move the damn And thing. just move it, right? Just move it. It, it was just beautiful. Just move it. Whoever made the centerpieces, and I think I know who that was, um, Shantae, uh, they were amazing. And maybe, you know, if you want people to stand up at an event, get some tall oh, centerpieces. Oh, then you get to stand <laughs> Because they have they no stand, other option. No, but to stand up. Right, but to stand up so they could see. But it was it was great. It was great. I enjoyed that Art Rocks. And you can become a friend of Hibernian Hall. I am Hall. a friend of Hibernian Hall. Yeah. I am. That's how I met Harris. Okay. Because Hibernian Hall did a community um, talk. Okay. They asked, they sent out an email, and I got it, uh, about people coming in to have a nice continental breakfast and to talk about what they wanted, community people, what they wanted to see at Hibernian Hall. Right. So I was there for that then. And uh, Pam King, mm -hmm. Mel King's daughter, mm -hmm. um, he, she was there. Okay. And she was already a, a friend of Hibernian Hall. Nice. And she was telling me about it, and I'm saying, well, how, you know, I want to know what the fee was in order to become. Mm -hmm. But then because I discovered I was a senior citizen, I got to do the senior citizen thing. Discount. <laughs> <laughs> Discount. <laughs> so I became a friend of Hibernian Hall. Mm -hmm. So and I get everything so all the it. time now. Yeah. And it's so worth it. I think it is. people underestimate the value of um, being, being a part uh, of what's going on in your in community, your community actively and funding it yes. right we can't ask for other people to fund, fund stuff for us all the time go. there you go we have to we be a part to of that we talk about that more but we're going to go to a break okay and we, and we really do we okay. seriously need to you know what's more dangerous a man who isn't afraid of death or one who's found everything to live for. I asked him if he was proud of me. He emphatically said yes as he laid his pecan-colored head on my chest and I went through my mind a thousand times to figure out what that could possibly mean. And every single example ended in motivation for me. So you may not be afraid to die, but I'm more afraid to let them down. And I found something to live for, which is a dangerous motive forever fueled. See, your thoughts may be involuntary, but my actions are very calculated. I was a man with a plan, but now I'm a dad with a decree, and you can't take that from me. 
My sons ain't raised by no coward, and they won't be one either. If this be the measure of a man, the yardstick gonna need way more meters. I take it too far, so they never come up short, because I found everything to live for. As a scientist, I know by the time she takes her first breath, nine billion more tons of carbon pollution will be in the air. When she takes her first steps, wildfires will have burned millions more acres she could have explored. By the time a child born today goes to college, it may be too late to leave them the world we promised. Our window to act on climate change is like watching them grow up. We blink and we miss it. The black truck? Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. My mom and dad were traditional Asian parents. And my father would go to work before I woke up in the morning. And then he would come home too tired to play with me. I tell my son, I love you every single day. Now my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. So I teased him the other day and I said, how come you never say that to me? And he said, you're too old now. Now that he's a grandfather, he says, I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the material things, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious minute or moment. Say bye bye, mommy. Good afternoon, everybody. It's me, Elaine Hall Corbin, back to Artists of Color with my amazing, fun-filled guest, <laughs> Boss Lady News, Britt Johnson. Hey. Hey, girl. I'm glad <laughs> you're with me. I'm really glad you're with me. Yes. You know, we've been, we, we, we've been uh, colleagues at BNN for a minute. Right. More than six years, because my son, who apparently knocked over a table. Oh, it was <laughs> My son wasn't born yet. That's and, right. Yep, yeah, I've known you since before I had him, you and he's know. six now. Yeah. He is. Oh, that's what's wrong with him. He's six. I know. He's six, and, you know, he's a <laughs> Sorry, he's, there's no hope. He's six now. That's right. You know, he's a boy boy. I love it. I love it. I let him do it. Because <laughs> yeah, I'd I'm rather sure. him go ahead and <laughs> find himself through his field of just tumbling and jumping and climbing and, you know, wanting to throw the ball around mm -hmm. and bounce and on everything. And give mama fit. Right, right. Because if it's not that, then what? It's, That's it's true. devices. If it's not that. It's you know, not. they're just heads down the whole time in a device and you have to playing and a say, game. Hey, I'm up here. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm one of those parents that is like, okay, I'm going to let you kind of act up and until messy you, you the get house. To that point. Right. Until you know, it's time to clean up. There and, you go. And you're going to learn to clean up the mess you made. Right. And I give him, I give my daughter also a, for the most part, a limit on the device usage. Good. Because I don't always like her going to sleep with her device. And That's not good at you all. Know? That's not good at all. And so it's important, I think, especially as the economy's changing and all the different things going on and yeah. affirmative action being taken away and mm. all these other, you know, Supreme Court issues issue. being um, turned over. I think it's important for our kids to get to basics. Yes. Because learning is sometimes in something that you have to read. And That's if they're right. on their devices many they're times, not they're reading. not really reading. They're watching they're videos reading. that are programming them. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's very true. And it's funny you brought up affirmative action. People. I've listened to people talk about that, mm -hmm. like uh, Michelle and Barack. Mm -hmm. They talked about that. I listened to them on 
a small video that they did, and it was on the news, and they were saying, if it wasn't for affirmative action, we would not be where we are today. Right. Okay, I would not have been an attorney. I would not have been the first black president of this country. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, my wife would have not been the first black first lady. Right. It's affirmative action that did that. But then again, and we think about it and we talk about it, and everybody that I've talked to feel the same way. Okay. You know, we have lost our most and our strongest form of equality because when you're educated, nothing can be taken away from you. That's that right. education cannot be taken away. Right, and Harvard being one of the first to um, bring, bring uh, affirmative action out of its school and you have um, students that are already protesting yes, it. Yes, they are. Because if a alumni parent yes. can automatically, automatically bring, bring the, in their child, their child who might have lower grades, okay. what what fair piece is that? You know? That's true. Some and people say affirmative got, actions reverse racism. And you've I don't got think so. a black female president. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And where I see things like this going is into a place of segregation. Oh, yeah, it's right? coming. Because if, if they prevent people from being able to get into schools because they are not required to allow them into schools, yes. then people will start creating their own schools. That's and when right. they create their own schools, they're going to create their own um, communities. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we've kind of... I do agree that we've kind of gone behind we have. because there's not enough black people, and I'm, I'm going to bring it up for a second, there's not enough black people that it's are okay. homeowners, and that percentage is so low, and when it comes to the possibility of you needing your own school, where are you going to put it? Okay. Where if you, you don't put it? own anything, where are where you going to put it? I agree. <laughs> You're still going to have to ask somebody Can to I be able to do something. Or buy a piece of land or buy a building to make a school out of, mm -hmm. and if it's in that area that they don't want you, right? that's going to be another fight. Right. Affirmative you action to own is the powerful. Land, to own the building so you can do what you want with it. Absolutely. And there's that First Amendment. You got that right. Yeah. That, and, you know, people, I personally don't always uh, want to bring up places like Rosewood places like Tulsa, uh, places where, you know, the, uh, Harlem uh, Renaissance, where St. Augustine, St. Augustine, where black excellence had to create its own community. Yes. And, but they were still allowed to Ooh. build those communities yes. and they became successful. Yes, they did. Even though, even though, even though they were attacked, burnt down, burnt down, destroyed, Many of them were killed. Mm -hmm. They started over again. Every time. You know, they started over again. So, Tulsa's still building mm -hmm. to this day. So, Rosewood is still building to this day. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because, you know, as millennials of all color get into that next wave of how is the world going to be governed, Yes, it's a question of, you know, will an Asian person not be allowed into Harvard because their grades are better than an alumni child and is the Asian community, which has now become more political, which yes, they typically that, weren't. That's the reason that, that's part of the reason affirmative action got thrown out. It was an Asian young man who took that case to the Supreme Court mm. because he thought that there shouldn't be no affirmative action because we as black folks shouldn't have that behind us. What about our GPAs? That's what's important. It doesn't matter who you are, but that's, he's the one that brought that case to the Supreme Court. The reason I know, I saw him on TV at least three or four times, mm -hmm. and I must say, I wrote him an email. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. And what people don't understand is historically, the reason affirmative action became important is because you have people who were smart enough to be someplace, but they were kept out because of segregation. So yep. it's like they were kept out. So now 
we're requiring you to allow these people at a certain amount, right? Because it's yeah, like cause they... affirmative action didn't mean absolutely any and everybody. There's a quota. There's only a certain number, number. of people that are allowed to be, allowed to be able to That's be entered it. into allowed. something. So when we have these conversations, it it's concerning to me because my son's six years old. Is he going to be kept out of something there you go. because there's no requirement, mm -hmm. even though he might be smarter than the, the next, ne person. next person? I feel the same way about my grandchildren. You know? Yeah. I've got three little ones. I got a seven, a 10, and a 13 year old. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about them now. Right. And this is why I push so hard for people to understand ownership. Because if you own your own piece of property, you can start a business within there. That's right. So if you want to start a daycare, if you want to start an after school program. program. And we need these things though. We yeah, need we opportunities we where people can create businesses that, that allow people in. Yes. Especially people of color because there's still so much fear against the color of our skin. Y yeah, it is. And it doesn't matter what what your grades are, mm -hmm. what your GPA is. It's the color of your skin that they see first. They don't ask anything else besides that. Right. And as you've noticed, my folks on my television audience, we've gone from art and culture to actually just culture. That's because right. Because the things that Britton and I are talking about are important. Mm -hmm. And we as a community, need to understand that right we have to we have to protect and nurture and bring forth our young people our children we got to do that it's mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. so i say we'll have to keep doing it we have to keep doing it you know and it does intertwine right because without knowing the arts yes we won't know our culture, culture. and and affirmative action everywhere allowed people to bring their um, culture into these businesses. We had to fight to be able to have locks instead of straight oh, front didn't hair. We? I remember those two twins. You know? I remember those twins that went and fought for that. And it's like, it, 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 you have to see it first, right? You have to see the art. You have to appreciate the art that looks like you, that represents you, you, that makes you feel proud for you then to in turn kind of show that on the outside of your own physique mm -hmm. and be comfortable with that and see that yourself as beautiful piece of art. And then companies have to accept that culture into their own culture. Yeah, they have to intertwine it. Right. You have to be able to see both. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, one side is going to not know, mm -hmm. the other side is going to say, that side doesn't care. Right. Because of the color of my skin. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's deep, it, you know, conversations can definitely run deep. And, and the beauty of art, which is also similar to music, oh, is yes. it, it provides a space for these conversations yes, to be had, does. right? You yes. might not get a lot of millennials talking about um, art and culture and politics and and how it affects business but it happens within the art space yes it does yeah because it's part of the culture mm -hmm. I was at a program back in April another program um, there is a group an organization I love them dearly called castles of our skin okay they the two founders is are uh, Ashley Gordon and Anthony Green. Both young black people. Mm -hmm. They got a grant to go to Detroit. Mm. I did not know that there was an institute in Detroit of all black music. Oh wow. All kinds. Wow. Rock and roll, hip hop. Uh, orchestra music, mm -hmm. jazz, you name it, any kind of black music that was ever written or and or composed is in that building. Wow. They went there and spent a week there mm -hmm. and brought back so
so much information. Right. And they started this program called Castles of Our Skin. Wow, that's gorgeous. That's beautiful. Isn't it? Yeah. The, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because in April, they did down at uh, the Black Box Theater, the Boston Arts, Arts, Boston Arts Center on Tremont Street, mm -hmm. they did a program called Black Future. Mm. It was music and a little bit of poetry. They, not, not even poetry, it was poetry, but some of it was also excerpts. And the excerpts were from my favorite science fiction writer, Octavia Butler. Oh, wow, okay. And I've read every single one of her books. Yes. She, they used her as a backdrop mm. to what the music was about. Mm -hmm. And then they did excerpts of, of one of her books, my daughter's reading it now, called Parable of the Sour. Okay. And they did some excerpts, and then around that was the music. And in the background of the music were questions being asked to the young people that were fellows of this particular festival that they were in. It was a festival, that's what it was. Okay. And they asked questions like, what do you imagine your community to be like? Mm -hmm. What do you imagine your world? What do you imagine you as a young black man and or woman? Mm -hmm. And the answers were profound answers. Mm -hmm. You know, I had one, there was one young man who played a flute. He was an amazing young man. He talked about wanting to see a black orchestra artist that looked like him, mm -hmm. dressed however they wanted to right. as far as their culture, you know, and their feelings were concerned and being able to do that without being shunned. There was another young lady who said, I want to be able to see more young, little black girls seeing us and knowing that they can be musical artists, right. composers, musicians, and knowing that, they, knowing that there are others that look like them. Right. And that was like unbelievable. I loved that, that particular concert. Mm -hmm. It was very, very good. Wow. And to get that information and to listen to these young people talk about that mm -hmm. and saying what they, they wanted to know, what do you imagine your community like? Mm -hmm. One young lady said, I would love to see a BSO that was all of us. Mm. Can you imagine that? Wow. Okay, yeah. and we're talking about that because we're talking about our culture, mm -hmm. we're talking about teaching, we're talking about having the space. And to me, that's important. Right, and feeling comfortable. In your skin. Yes, and you know? I think it's amazing the story you just said where the young man would love to see, you know, composers and black composers being able to wear whatever they're comfortable, whatever they see, would be um, acceptable for a, a concert. Yes. Because you can't represent your own culture when if it comes to the symphony because you have to dress like other people. Tie and right. black suit, white shirt. Like another culture. Yes. Yeah. And we're not their culture. Right. Right. You know, we're not their culture. And that's, uh, I, I just, this is kind of sidebar, but Go part ahead. of the story too. So I don't know if you've, you, yes, you have been watching um, Queen Charlotte. No, I haven't watched, I haven't gotten to Queen Charlotte yet. Okay, so Queen Charlotte uh, is she was a, a sub piece, yes, of Bridgerton. Okay. And um, Queen Charlotte is one of the black queens. So I found out there was more than one black queen. There was. Queen Charlotte what? was one okay. of the black queens. No, and no. what's interesting about when you're first watching the first or second episode, I believe it's the first episode, is she had brought her own wedding dress. And the king's mother did not want her to wear her own wedding dress because it didn't represent, like the wedding had nothing to do with her culture. 
it only had to do, to do with, with their, their culture. culture. So she wanted See? to put on a wedding dress that represented the British, mm -hmm. not which represented mm -hmm. Queen Charlotte's, Charlotte's heritage. heritage. Yes. There you go. And I thought it was interesting that she really, really, really wanted to wear that dress. Oh, wow. And wasn't able to, and it really hurt, hurt her. her. And I don't think that a lot of people recognize that, that when you become professional to a certain level, you want to bring your culture With into you. that too, because yes. it's a part of it. Thank it's, you. It's 100% a part of it. And um, some, some homework for you guys out there. If you don't already know, Elvis Presley used to go to Rosetta Thorpe's concerts. That's where he Elvis did. was inspired. The queen of rock and roll, Rosetta Thorpe. Thorpe. Yes. What? His whole oh, demeanor. Me. Demeanor. He used to go to her concerts. The concerts used to be held at a train. She's a black female. She started off with gospel singing, but then they turned from using the um, uh, uh, the piano, the okay. big piano, yes. to using the guitars. And she decided to use an electric guitar to gospel music. And that's where, if you watch that new movie, Elvis, yes, he actually does a brief tribute to her because that's where he got his inspiration. inspiration. He used to go to Rosetta Thorpe. She's the queen of rock and roll. Rosetta Thorpe. And I know then, that name. I did not know yes, that she was the queen of rock and roll. The queen of rock and roll. And then in terms of the symphony, because I don't know why, but I do like symphony music. I do like the opera. And there's quite a few black women that are in the opera. I'd oh, love to yes, see some black are, men in there. I, that's why I was telling you about Castles of Our Skin. Mm -hmm. They went during, I'm sorry, I did not mean to interrupt you like mm -hmm. that. They, when, when we couldn't be out during the pandemic, they did a eight episode, um, eight episodes of calling it, they called it the uh, Founders Chat. Okay. In the Founders Chat, every, every episode was about what was a young black composer. Wow. The, and they were all females. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were all females. A few of them were from out of the country, but a few of them were in the country too, in the United States. Mm -hmm. But they were all black females. And just to give a really quick shout out to the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, he does play the violin. Yes, I know. He plays the violin, which I had not known before. I learned that, I learned that from He's into Alma classical Lewis. music as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So people would be surprised. Um, what people do. What people do, what they listen to, and open up your mind to potentially experiencing oh, someone yeah. else that might look like you that's in a different genre of music. Yep. There is an album that I downloaded because I went to an Ujima event oh, you um, did. up at the White Church. This was like years ago. Okay. And there was a song, and I, I shazammed it, and I'm like, what song is this? So there is a composer, uh -huh. I don't remember her name, but her, her copulation is called uh, Symphony in E Minor. Symphony in E Minor. Symphony in E up. Minor. And all of that, black female composer. All of it. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So we're out there. Oh, We've yeah. always been out there That's in true. different We've places. We've always been out there mm -hmm. and our children our young people need to know even some of our elders that probably don't know either mm -hmm. need to know right I know that when I go to talk to when I go to see my mom once a week I always go and see my mom mm -hmm. she's in the center and I always talk to her about all this stuff and even though she's not really coherent enough to understand it she'll sit there and tell me mm, oh okay I know about that. Saying, yeah, okay, <laughs> but the point is, I talk to her about these things all the time. Yeah. And if I've got little clips, mm -hmm. and and you know, and the music's on there, I let her listen to listen them. Listen to it. Yeah. And she and she really gets like, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's right. just right. It's good to know. There's an amazing black female harpist also that's all over Instagram, and actually yes, she's I been. She's performed in some concerts with, I can't remember. Who. She's amazing, though. She could take any song and play it on the harp. On the harp? Yes. Any song her. and play it on the harp. I saw amazing. a picture of her with the, with, the, with the harp on Instagram. Yes. 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 She's absolutely amazing. Oh, wow. 
So we're out there. Just go look. Doing what we do, <laughs> being who we be. Right. <laughs> you know? So what are your plans artistically for Boss Lady News? <laughs> I'm you got so any not ideas? used to being the person. I know you're not. <laughs> so I like what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, so plans for Boss Lady News, I'm very excited that we'll be coming back. I know. And, Isn't it wonderful? Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so excited. I feel like it's this long-awaiting return. It's long um, overdue. Yes. So I'm very excited that we'll be coming back. With, uh, we have a connection overseas in London. We do. Yeah, we do. We do. Yes. Every producer here, I would love to be able to connect with this connect um, in London. They're, in London. They are part of the Wu-Tang connection that I had made. And um, the name of the show that's out there is called Reppin' For You. It is a London-based um, radio show, and he interviews different people. And what I just like about it is it's an opportunity for us to kind of bring things across it's seas. The ocean. Yes. Yeah. But yes. As, as the British would say, across the pond. Across the pond. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I'm very excited about that um, because I'll be able to roll in some of the interviews that are coming this out of is, London. This is fantastic. Yes. Yes. Wow. So, oh, that is, I like that. Yeah. We'll be getting back to... Um, just giving people a platform to be yes. able to to Absolutely. be highlighted. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we need to be highlighted. Yeah, yeah. we're doing so. So that's so things. that's that's one of your new things that you're getting into. Yes. Are you going to be hanging out for the summer? Because as I told you about, uh, well, we always know about the big head. Mm -hmm. We also told you about Gordine. Mm -hmm. And oh, are you going to be down at? Uh, What's the name of them people? The NAACP conference is coming to Boston. I do want to be there the for month. that. Yes, I do want to be there for that because um, now that affirmative action has been turned over, okay. I think it's going to be important for people to get out there and support some of these legacy um, organizations, organizations that have been fighting, you know, consistently. Yeah for and our we rights. we need to support them and we here in Boston. Absolutely. As folks of color to keep them to continue that fight. Absolutely. That is important. 100%. Because, you know, there's big money for attorneys and lawyers these days when helping uh, people who have been wrongfully shot and killed oh, by yes. the police. There's big money in that for attorneys of all color right now. But the yes. NAACP he. has been there from See, they've been there the from ground the ground up. Uh, okay, yeah. we're talking since we're talking since 1919. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what we're talking. Right. They've been there. People like Thurgood Marshall. Mm -hmm. I love that man immensely. Mm -hmm. I I read his books, and and I loved it when uh, what's the man's name? Black Panther. Oh. oh. <laughs> We only know him as Black Panther <laughs> these days. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's all we know. Oh uh, my gosh. His name's gonna come to me soon as the show soon ends. As the show's over. Oh yeah. Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thanks, Ash. <laughs> You're not kidding. He played Thurgood Marshall. Yes, yes. In the movie Marshall. Yes. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being with us this afternoon on Artists of Color. Yes. As you can see, we had culture, we had uh, community, we had politics, politics. <laughs> we had this is what you need to do, but thanks for being with us, and most of all, thanks my wonderful colleague, guest, Britt, oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, this was great. Absolutely. This was absolutely great. <laughs> Ready for it.